Hey folks, good evening. It's uh, Jeff Camarda, uh, about 7 o'clock Monday the 24th, uh, with a special report uh, on, the, on the market tumult that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to try to share some of this, uh, uh, this technical chart information with you. And I'm working two computers, so please forgive the, uh, the confusion here a little bit. I'm not even sure I can scroll. Oh well. The, uh, but the, the, anyway, the, the, as you probably know from watching the news, uh, the, the markets have been extremely unstable over the past couple of weeks for a variety of reasons. Um, as Kim is very uh, fond of saying, it's, uh, we try to focus on what is, not on what should be. So I'm going to spare you the, the rationale for what's going on in the markets, at least what I think uh, is driving it. And just kind of report on the technicals, the the the, the indicators that, that drive our process these days. And one of our primary market direction indicators, called BOSS, uh, went negative uh, um, either late Friday or over the weekend. And in fact, now three of the four primary indicators that we follow are negative. The last one, called Bull Bear, which is uh, this chart that you can see up here, which I'll uh, reference in a few minutes, is knocking on the door, but not quite there. And it may not, in fact, get there, but we're watching it very carefully. That tends to be a longer-term indicator of uh, what is expected. So the indicators tell us different things about different parts of the market, some longer-term, some shorter-term. Um, so you probably will take some comfort in the fact that we started shaving money off or selling positions last week and on Friday as the market action hinted at the indicated change, which did in fact come to pass. Um, this would have us 100% uh, um, out of sector rotation and ta tactical opportunity uh, per uh, that indicator. We traded a similar pattern, by the way, in December and may consider a pivot to the calendar effects trade uh, which goes off uh, in a couple of days uh, for sector rotation if uh, we, we, we make that decision. That is what are one of the strategies that we're considering at this point, and we have already raised quite a bit of cash. Uh, for those of you in, in the annuity and outside 401k uh, models, uh, so which we call store min max, um, the, w w the cash that was there that we went to cash over the past several weeks uh, was not deployed to the real estate and utilities um, the, uh, targets that we had uh, identified. As we were preparing to, to, to rotate into them, uh, the market started to turn over after our last review. We decided to stay in cash. That turned out to be a good decision. And the cash in those portfolios ranges from 10 to 70%, depending on the model, which has likely been a very good buffer for you. Uh, Kim, and Kim wrote most of this, by the way, uh, has a few sources that still believe in fundamentals of the market and think this is getting, the market's getting oversold. It could be viable short term. And they will probably range bound for the uh, for the near term, which means that it may, you know, we're probably not going to, if, if it in fact doesn't go lower and bounces from here, it, it probably won't for a while is what that means. The technicals look bad and many of these portfolios uh, have built up some cash. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the S&P is sitting on its 52 week uh, moving average, uh, which is a technical support level that, you know, the, the support, you know, should hold or bounce here. If it goes through support, that, that would be a bad sign. Uh, but uh, um, it is uh, um, really a coin toss as to what happens from this perspective. The uglier parts, uh, the IWM small caps are in distribution phase. That means it's getting, you know, dumped. Uh, and the uh, NASDAQ, um, also the tech stocks, the QQQs, also bad and technically in distribution, which is, you know, the, the liquidation because they're below the 200-day moving average. But there are some rays of sunshine for the intermediate outlook. Um, so this is really important, folks. We designed, and again, this, this is Kim's, these are Kim's words, we designed the blends of these models to account for longer-term investments, uh, the bull bear, Caesar, integrated income models, et cetera, to be added to shorter-term portfolios. And I just say shorter-term, but they're traded on a shorter-term. The indicator we look is that we get in and out on a shorter-term time frame, like sector rotation and technical um, the, um, opportunity. So when one piece goes all out, the others may not. And this gives clients the opportunity, depending on the specific custom blends of portfolios that we put together with your PW and, and your investment policy statements, gives you the opportunity to benefit from continued market participation and have other pieces do the short-term timing, depending on, on their custom uh, plan uh, designs. It, it kind of acts as a hedge, if you will. So if we sell that a sector or technical opportunity in its entirety, as we did today, that generates an automatic cash buffer in the accounts uh, um, uh, against bull bear or the other positions, again, as a hedge. Now, she doesn't think of them uh, uh, so much as a single portfolio, and we don't. 
uh, but Kim and, and Jonathan don't think of them so much as a single portfolio, but how the different portfolios work together to generate cash at certain times, some keying off a of shorter term, some keying off a of longer term indicators. We also, by the way, bought about 7% gold in the bull bearer uh, portfolio model today, Monday. Um, it has in the inflation wind at its back, certainly, and, uh, and the chart is very appealing. So overall, we're actually quite pr- pleased with the performance, and, and while um, she doesn't love the performance on some pieces. And again, it's kind of a blend. You don't, you know, you don't want to uh, put all your eggs in one uh, 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 tactical bet basket. It has balanced out well, we think, which was the goal. So again, we blend the model so that we have a core piece like Bull Bear that stays invested longer term. Uh, when it hits the proverbial fan, this piece gets out on the other satellite pieces like Sector t- Tactical are designed to be the more active buffer, seeking to generate alpha, do better than the market, or go out of the market while it's, uh, it's invested. So then referring now to the chart that you see up on the screen, and I really don't think I can, there we go, um, the, uh, um, the, the chart that you see up here on the screen, maybe this will do it, does this change it? Bear with me, folks. Uh, it does, good, okay. So the, uh, um, so this is, you know, a longer term indicator. Right, um, and if it, and if you look at and the way this works, this line, this this gray line, is the actual indicator. It's not the market. It's the indicators oscillating up and down based on a variety of factors. If it goes down and crosses the red line, that's a sell. That, that's in, that, that's indicative of uh, of a bear phase. Um, if it crosses up above the green line, up above the green line, that's uh, that's buy. That's that's indicative of a bull phase. So the bull bear indicator, and you can see it oscillates. And if you look at what the market has done, this is the S&P 500 down here. Um, when it crossed down below this red phase, it would have been a sell signal about here. Uh, and then you'll notice that it didn't, when it got back up here, it was a buy signal that was late, uh, later in 03. The, the bottom, by the way, as I recall, was in March of 2003. And But the indicator really waits or sh- is interpreted as, as having a confirmed up or down trend. It doesn't, it's not instant, uh, but wants some, um, uh, some verification, the fact that the, the overall trend has changed. So you can see here uh, a sell signal uh, after the market had uh, here gone down a bit, and then a buy signal here. Um, maybe about here after the market, after in fact, after that bounce. Now, one critical thing, and this is really important, fact, and then I'll wrap it up because I know it's probably getting a little long-winded by now, um, is that March of 2020, when I started to freak out, what was going on a COVID, what should be rather than what is, right? What, what I thought should happen rather than what was happening. You notice that the indicator here went almost down to the red line, but didn't cross it. Um, and it didn't cross it. And the market, while the market, you know, took a, a, a pretty nasty slide there and uh, um, the, it, it didn't go into bear phase and while we had a really ugly March I think of 2020 the overall trend was pretty strongly up and this indicator would not have indicated a sell uh, which is is what I in fact did so the so and that's where we are now the long-term trend on the market we haven't gone all or mostly to cash because this longer term signal, while it's knocking on the door of a bear market, like it did maybe in March of 2020, it hasn't opened a door yet, and that signal hasn't flashed. So, you know, and, and, and to tie all this up, I know that this, these are scary times, and I've been predicting, you know, uh, this financial storm for, for a long time. Um, and it's taken us a while to re-engineer our methodology uh, to the point where uh, we are very, very confident that this will be both profitable and protective of the downside going forward. We didn't really work all the kinks uh, until probably late summer of last year, 2020. But as mentioned, I'm, we all are very, very pleased with how it's operated since then and how it's actually operating now. And I, I guess in, you know, in, in closing, I just wanted to let you all know that we are watching this very carefully uh, and expect that, uh, um, uh, that there will be some more changes. Sooner or later, this thing is going to go um, belly up, and uh, um, and we we are, you know, working t- very hard and diligently, and spending a lot of time on this to protect you guys from that downside. Um, and uh, in closing, um, you know, a, a lot of folks forgot the tech meltdown, the dot com bust uh, from 2000 uh, to 2002, 
And tech stocks, and, and this market, in my view, bears a lot of similarity to that. Tech stocks went down something like 78% um, in, a, in about a two-year period of time. Um, and it took 15 years, actually 18 years, considering inflation, for it to break even again. Long, long time. Big gut punch. And, and this market, in, in many ways, I think has you know, the potential for that kind of a route which is why we've been working very, very hard since COVID presented nearly two years ago to build methodology to protect your wealth and your retirements and your family legacies from that kind of a cataclysm, which really could be devastating. So we're all watching this very carefully. We think we've got to figure it out pretty well. I think we'd be happy with the results. We have, we have both hands on the wheel and, um, uh, and we're watching out for you. So. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, as always, email me directly, j at c-a-m-a-r-d-a dot com, or reach out to your uh, personal wealth assistant. And we're also, you know, many of you have asked for more ongoing feedback beyond the videos, and maybe it's too long-winded, or you want less information, or you just don't want to watch the video, whatever. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to start sending out emails and texts uh, to you uh, with a little shorter piece of information. Uh, if that's uh, more uh, more digestible for it. Okay, thank you so much for listening so long uh, and so well. We do uh, um, we are watching this very carefully for you. And uh, until next message, Dr. Jeff Camarda signing off for the nonce uh, on here on uh, Kim's birthday. She's 52, uh, January 24, 2022. Thanks, guys. God bless you all. Good night.